All right, while stocks are pulling back today, just by a little bit, Bitcoin's run is showing no signs of stopping. 72,000, the latest milestone cross. And let's bring in Kate Rooney now for more. Hi, Kate. Hey there, Tyler. Hey, Tyler. Yeah, so this is the most euphoric pocket right now when it comes to the markets. The big driver has been demand and flows into this group of new crypto ETFs. JP Morgan points out there's now been a total of $20 billion of inflows into these ETFs. That's excluding Grayscale, which has actually seen outflows due in part to higher fees. Citi, meanwhile, says the flows are, quote, significantly outpacing the flows that you saw into GLD. That was the first gold ETF that launched back in 2004, even on an inflation-adjusted basis. Since they launched, only two out of 28 trading days have seen outflows when it comes to all these ETFs. Citi also points out a very small correlation with Bitcoin returns and those we've seen for U.S. equities, gold, and real rates, which is a big change there. Others, meanwhile, pointing out this increase we've seen in institutional demand, at least signs of it, that you've seen these average spikes in larger transaction size. That tends to indicate some wealthier buyers getting in. This has been a pretty volatile path to 72,000 guys for Bitcoin. That is in large part due to this increase we have seen in leverage. Investors are paying huge premiums at this point to keep those long positions, which is really exacerbating some of the price moves in both directions that we've seen. As Glassnode analysts put it, this speculation is showing up in both directions, highlighting heightened risk appetite. Other factors, you've got this event in April that is essentially meant to cap, keep a cap on supply. It's called the halving, coming up in about five weeks or so. Then some news out of the UK as regulators open the door to exchange traded funds when it comes to Bitcoin overseas, guys. Back over to you. Really fascinating stuff, Kate. Thank you for that.